say hello on a day like this. This is what Tisa was saying a few minutes before we started this show. Today is an extremely sad day for human rights defenders in this country and across the world. Father Stan Swami, a human rights defender, a Jesuit priest, and an accused in the Bhima Koregao case is no more. I'll go straight to my guests. Joining me are Tisa Zetelbag, needs no mention. She is one of our foremost human rights activists. And John Dayal, my senior in journalism and a human rights activist. Tisa, I read your article, a very strong article, and you mentioned that um, Father Stan's death is an institutional murder. It's a very strong words. Nothing short of an institutional murder because you, he, was, he was in custody. He was in NIA custody since at least March 10th or 15th. Those of all have been closely associated with him, have been hearing reports from the closest to him, the Jesuit brothers, his close family, his lawyers, that his health was failing, that he's even contracted COVID. There was, an, there was a callous obduracy in not just the NIA agency, but even the jail authorities and the bureaucracy, constantly not accepting that, ferreting him from Taloja to JJ. I mean, at midnight, I mean, he's a man who's at Pakistan's, he's 84 years old, he's frail. And there was a refusal to accept what was happening to him. There, even the mulakat said stopped. It, I mean, I, I just want to say hats off to his legal team. I mean, Mehir Desai and Kritika, they've gone through hell and beyond and yet stuck to it, not lost their focus. The Jesuit brothers in Mumbai have been with them. And just to plod on and on and on against such a callous bureaucracy. I mean, I don't know what, what pleasure it gives the jail superintendent and the jail person to just lie and say that man is well when he's not to say that he ha I mean it, it's just unbelievable before the vacation bench of the high court rightly intervened and talked to him we lost virtually a month you know virtually a month I mean that age it's critical and it's it, you know it's about Stan Swami of course we've lost him it's his death it's his institutional murder but it's also about the prison conditions medical health independent monitoring uh, the other prisoners, the under trials. I mean, it's. I mean, it's just. It's just very callous. And for it to happen in a state like Maharashtra, which we call and believe to be a progressive state, I mean, I think it's shocking. My next question is to Mr. John Dayal, uh, sir. What do you think is the legacy of Stan Swami? Jail. The bird is free and it sings. It sings of freedom. The legacy of this martyr is this resistance resist defy don't allow yourself to be silent by the might of the state i may take on from where tista left of course it's a murder by the state of course but the state decided on the date when they filed the charges that they wanted to make him and the rest of them object or abject lessons for the rest of us not to speak they decided then that these people will rot in jail irrespective of the fictitious nature of the charges irrespective of the many applications of jail people have heart that is being denied bail his case was the most classic his and barbara Rao's. they were already old people with one leg in the grave they can't run they can't Please, they can't fly. The sub judge, the inspector, the DG, whatever, they are, in my eyes, innocent. It is a couple of people at the very top of the pyramid. And the rest of these people, these dummies, uh, whatever you call them, they have to obey wrong orders. But the giver of those orders in New Delhi have to be held culpable, responsible, and have to be indicted in the eyes of the world. I, I don't understand this. Why was uh, Father Stan such a, a threat? I mean, who was threatened by him? Implementation of the Chhattisgarh Act, which grants autonomy to tribal areas, Adivasi areas. Now, you have to ask Rukmini of the governments in Jharkhand and the governments elsewhere, why they feel threat, 
threatened by Adivasis who ask for their rights under the constitution. Because there's a conflict of interest. I mean, you had the most valiant battle being fought after the state of Jharkhand was formed and large mining corporations being kept out because of this struggle. It was not a Maoist Naxalite struggle. It was a peaceful democratic struggle. It's when you don't allow a peaceful democratic struggle that struggles become uh, uh, possibly violent. I think the Indian state needs to ask itself, state and center has to ask itself, why are Adivasis not being allowed dignified rights over their own land, land which they have nurtured and uh, you know the same for generations. You know, it's a conflict of interest. I mean, it's a huge conflict of interest. And I mean, let's look at the media. We're talking to National Herald today. I, I mean, I asked the media, where are your cameras? Where are your eyes? Do we go to rural India? Do we actually cover these democratic struggles? I mean, do we uh, do we cover these protests? Do we cover the voices that are being raised today? I was just looking at the there are Adivasis protesting in Gujarat over a Vedanta plant. How much coverage does it get? So Father Stan was a threat because he gave voice to the voiceless. He raised this issue. He even petitioned the Jharkhand High Court in 2017 when he uh, for 4,000 under trials, guiltily incarcerated. He's a petitioner there. Now, I mean, that surely raises a question for human rights jurisprudence in this country. But here's a human rights defender. 75, 80 plus year old priest, he was 80 plus even then, who's a petitioner. He's raising the voice and then suddenly becomes a subject of false FIRs and false charge sheets. Should there be not some protection automatically that the system gives him? Is India not a failed democracy if you don't ask these questions? Mr. Dayal, is India a failed state? Considering not just Father Stan, but uh, people like Barbara Rao, Sudha Bhardwaj, Gautam Navlakha have been in incarcerated. I mean, in any other country, in any other civilized country, they would be considered heroes. Of course, it's a question of conditions in jail and the bail process. Lacks of people are in jail. Lacks. Many under trials have been in jail much longer than the period if they were guilty and had been convicted. That is a separate issue. But here, this group of people were to be made examples. To crush, as Thesa said, the voices of anybody who dare speak for the right of people. For the right of people for their own life, their own health, their own resources, their wife, their children, for their own future, which was imparted away, sold, stolen and sold, I should say, to crony capitalists. Even today, day after, you look at the paper, they're full of advertisements by government agencies saying such and such land has to be taken away for a road, for a factory, so and so acres have to be given away to a factory, to Tesla or whatever. These are lands that belong to the people who live there, whose livelihood is there, whose ancestors have lived there forever. It's a collective fight all over the globe. And India's, uh, what happens in India will impact on this. And therefore I say, in his death in custody, denied basic human dignity. He's become a martyr for us all, a symbol. You know, the uh, advocates arguing for him today, uh, when uh, um, uh, the, the bail hearing, of course, everyone knows, came up at 2.30, and he had already passed at about 14 minutes past one o'clock. And uh, 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 the, the advocates had summoned uh, the medical director of the Holy Family Hospital, which had given him absolutely incredible care ever since he was there. And when Mr. Aaron D'Souza, who was the director of the hospital, told the court that, you know, he is no more, they were shocked. And the judges were actually shocked. And then Mehit argued, Mr. Desai continued to argue. And he said, but the matter doesn't end there. I'm pressing for a judicial inquiry into what I believe is culpability by the jail authorities and the NIA in whose custody he was. And therefore, I want a judicial inquiry order. And the matter has now been posted to next Tuesday. So, I mean, in his martyrdom, as John said, in his martyrdom, I hope the struggle will get much, much stronger and we'll get even more emboldened to say what we've, we've had to say, not just about Father Stan's in, uh, completely unfair death and incarceration, brutal death, but also the others. In this case, the UAPA itself, which according to me needs to be repealed, let's ask questions as to the governments that brought in this draconian law. Why do governments need a law like UAPA? Does your normal criminal law not work? 
the entire root of the UAPA is in the 1908 uh, British colonial law and in the Rowlatt Act. I mean, why does independent India need such a law which allows uh, jail without bail, which allows unfettered, uh, uh, unquestioned authority to state agencies to manufacture stories and charge sheets? And in this case, in the Bhima Koringao case, there is reason, good reason to believe that evidence was planted. This is what uh, top level forensic uh, experts in the United States have, have said, but the, uh, but the court is not hearing that matter. I mean, so, I mean, where, where does justice come from? That's what I wanted to ask you, Tista. Where does uh, justice come from then? Because here is this man who gave his life for Jal Jandar Zameen of other people, of tribals, not for his own Jal Jandar Zameen. And uh, we just packed him inside uh, the jail. We, uh, the NIA refused him medical bail. Oh, so where, where will justice come from? I think all agencies in this country, all different institutions of the democracy need to ask that question of themselves. I mean, civil society is asking this question all the time. Human rights activists are raising this question all the time. But I think, for instance, the media needs to ask it. The political class needs to ask it. I'm sorry to raise difficult questions, but I'd like to know how many people in the opposition spoke up in the Bhima Koregao case and how forcefully. How forcefully. No. I mean, you know, this is, it has to be a concerted effort from different organs of society and state. Yes, we will blame the NIA. We are blaming the NIA. We are blaming the jail authorities. We pull out the courts when they don't give uh, medical bail on time. But they are not the only institution. I think the media has failed us completely. Completely. Because of the sporadic and sensational way it covers issues. It doesn't cover human rights as a process. Does it look at prison conditions, prison monitoring, uh, how jail authorities function? When we get moments to hope, like the Delhi High Court case in uh, Asif and uh, Asif Tanha and uh, Devangana and Natasha's case, then we do. But surely we have to look at the processes that lead up to such incarcerations. What is the signal? And and to say that it's just a judicial failure or an NIA failure or that you have a... I mean, these, these existed. These existed. But today what has happened is everybody is looking for a signal from one person or one institution or one leadership group. And then everything else is done in accordance to that. The media itself, look at the media. There may be occasional good report. All institutions are bankrupt, if not comatose and dead, because all power has coalesced, has shrunk, has been focused and put into a couple of hands. This death of this old ailing man with his shivering head, that his death, his ghost, his spirit will move and mobilize the people and will haunt this government and the men who lead it. Uh, Mr. John Dayal, I have to close the show. But if I may ask, what are your personal memories of Stan Swami? These are not ordinary religious people. They run schools and colleges, of course. But the main work is to be with the people, particularly the people who suffer. So most of the organizations are like that. Stand a Tamil man them to tell them that they are God's creations, that they are strong if they stand up, that there's no tyrant in the world, no dictator who they cannot face if they are united. And that is the threat he and others like him posed to the people. I'd like to recall that 2,000 years ago, a 33-year-old man did the same, and he was killed in judicial custody. This 84-year-old man, under the same circumstances, for articulating the words of the poor, for teaching them their own human dignity, is again lynched. He, I, I've met him. I've known him for a long time. I've met him I mean, just before COVID event and met him in Bagicha, his hutment, you would call it, out in the outskirts of uh, Rachi. I and Harshmandar and Akarma, we had gone there and met him. Such a warm person, a simple soul. If you were passing by, you would not recognize him for the great man he was. Tall, of course, but with a jola, with a shirt and a loose pair of trousers and a chapel. But when he sat down with these people, you could see how they looked upon him. Not by how he spoke, but how they 
look how the hung on his very lips. Because he had in his ears made them understand that he was not there for his own sake, for his own glory, for something that he wanted from them, but that he was with them, one of them. Rukmini always said to me that I leapt out of the walls of my church to live with the people. Those were his words. And that's the way he was. I mean, he was a committed Jesuit priest. But for him, his religion was to be with the people and to struggle for their rights and their dignity. That was his real faith. And he did it with a simplicity and a dogged obstinacy and commitment. I mean, I was talking, since it's, for the last two hours, I've been talking to young students who've grown up in Ranchi and Jamshedpur. I mean, they are probably 10, 15, 20 years, 20, 25 years younger than me. And they've all grown up knowing this legend of Fa Father Stan Swami and what Bagecha meant. Now, this is, this is the, it's contemporary lore. It's, it, it's history in the making. And yet we do not know what we have lost. He was a regular contributor to Sabrang India. Today we put out as tribute all the articles he wrote for us. As sister said, yet we do not know what we have lost. Before closing the show, I'll just sum up what Tisa Setalwad just said. UAPA needs to be repealed. We need to look at our prisons. Uh, we have to ask why opposition parties don't intervene, don't raise their voice against such inhumanity, like what has happened to uh, Father Stan. We need to look at different constitutional institutions and their roles. We have to ask media why uh, they don't look at human rights as a process. And who is the state with? What happened to the first FIR in the Bhima Koregaon case? And we must also remember whatever happened. Father Stan Swami is a contemporary law. I'm Rukmini Sen, you're watching National Herald. Thank you, Tista, and thank you, John Dehra.